So now that I've got the holes drilled, I got this soldered on. It needs these feeder wires need to go through. Uh, remember to solder them properly. <laughs> There's been a couple of times I've had to desolder. Now this can be less than easy to do to try and get these guys in. Red seems to be going in, black not so much, so we'll go in the black hole again. And we'll hollow that out, see if that makes it a little bit easier for black. Oh, so close. Okay, so I'm getting red all the way through, but I'm not getting black all the way through. So we'll go this way, where we take this. All the way through. I'm going to move this a little. So, I can just stick the black in there like that. Pull that through like that. There, now we've got them both through. From there, join these up back here. Got some room to move, that's what I want. Got room to move, okay. So now that's in. I can't see any. Oh, there's a tiny piece there. That wires are in underneath. Yep, everything looks good there. So I'll do the last one. Okay, track is not moved down, but it's all in place. Feeders are in place, and I've connected one of the feeders from here into uh, power so that'll have to power the whole thing and this is the first test. In fact I'm running on DC right now because I've set this up so we run on either DC or DCC so everything goes according to the switch settings I don't have right. Okay it's because it's in a reverse loop Reverse that, and 21, 22, 23 needs to be like that in order to take the diverging route. And so let's try this again. Diverging route, diverging route. Okay, this is the new reverse loop. Now I've got to switch main power the other way around. We derailed there because I didn't have that switch set properly. So here we go. Now with all the turnouts it is confusing. I've got to label them and I want to come up to the panel as well. You can see we come through, we take the diverging route, we take the diverging route. Now we flip the power on the main. We go all the way around. We come back in. And we've got to stop because that turnout's the wrong way. So let's go backwards through the whole thing as well. Now in this case I'm going to flip the main power back because I'm going to come down on the main. Okay, certainly precarious on the mountainside there. But it all works. Okay, so now that I've tested this, all the connections work, i got power going okay, uh, I'm going to be able to glue the track down. Okay, uh, the track is now up, you can see it's 
kind of suspended by the, uh, the wire drops. I have the glue that I'm going to use, foam tack glue. Uh, what I do is I put some on this little bit of, uh, I can't remember the name of this, anyway, it's just plastic, nothing sticks to it. And then I have my uh, Starbucks spreader that I use. So, grab this, put some on. And you, you don't really need a lock. So I'm going to start over on this end because that's the way I do things. And all I'm doing is lifting the track enough to get some glue underneath all of the ties. I'm trying to spread it relatively thin, but enough glue that stuff will stick. Now being foam tack glue, it will in fact set up pretty quick. But it's not like I need every square millimeter glued down. So I don't know if you can see from that distance how this is going or not. Trying not to dribble any of the foam tack glue onto the layout. That was close. Although this is white at this point, it will dry clear, so... There, I've got enough to go that far. Now I'll go back here and press this in place. Make sure that the joiners are all the way they should be. And that goes down. Press the track in how I want. I have a roller here so I can roll this down. I'll just go to there because, you know, when I look at this, I can see it's coming up a bit. So, another thing that I'll need to do is put pins in, but before I do that, I'm going to do the rest of this track. recording a bunch of stuff and uh, what happened is my video camera lets me record to a, um, a card or to a hard drive and I ran out of space on the card and I had to finish this before everything dried. So you can see I got pins holding and I'm just going to press it back in place here, do an inspection, make sure everything's looking okay. So I have all of these pins in place now and everything's looking good where I do have joiners they join well okay now I got a bit of a gap here where I got to put some ties in so I'm going to do that next I'll just sprinkle a few out and yeah I can see where I need them in this case so Glob a little glue on and just push them under. Got a pair of pliers I can use as well. Okay. Just randomly grab them. 
Okay, it's time to work on the last reverse loop. It's going to come off of here, come around, join in here. What I'm doing now is looking at what kind of radius I can have. And the narrowest will be 11 and a quarter, which is this guy, which would be 22 and a half inches across. So that's that mark. So if I were to start it there, it would come out to here. And if I were to do the 12 and a half, it would be 25 inches, and the 25 would come out, so 12 and a half won't fit. Now, having said that, I look at that guy on there, yeah, so I'm going to have to build the, the curve out of uh, 11 and a quarter, which isn't a surprise. I mean, this one here, inner is 11 and a quarter and 12 and a half on the outside. So, I mean, as I say, I'm not surprised if that's the way it is. Uh, once I do that, I'll figure out whether it goes like this or whether I should have this coming more this way around. But this curve here is already 11 and, uh, and a quarter. So, if I Regardless of what I do, I'm going to have to come over this, which means a bunch of elevation in this area. Fast forward a little bit in time. This is the current status of the layout. It's a fair amount different from uh, what I was working on because this loop is now all finished. So this is the reverse loop we've been working on. And this is the second reverse loop. So you can see how I've brought this all the way out through here and back through there. As I went ahead and I marked in white here, 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 and here, all the demarcation points where I, uh, I go into a reversing loop. So I have three reversing loops. The big one that I mentioned starts over here, goes all the way around, comes back in here, stops there, onto the main line. Next one starts here, goes all the way around here to this one. And the easiest way to think of this is if I were to have a train coming up here and going straight through, it would come around and it would come back on itself again. So that's why the reversing loop. And over here, this particular one starts there and goes all the way around to here. And it's a reversing loop because it can cut across there as well. So a train could go that way and around and back that way. So those are the three numbers. I've marked what the radius of this track is and what the gradient is. So if I, you take a look at it, you can see it goes around there. It's a radius of 12 and a half inches and the gradient is 2%. So when we look at the side, that's a 2% gradient. Out here you can see a 16 and a quarter radius and a 12 and 3 eighths. Uh, radius and as I go along through here you can see that my inner radius is 11 and a quarter on there again we're back to the 12 and a half and that's at two and a half percent as I pull back here here's the white marks that I'm telling what I was telling you about that I've used to indicate the start and stop of the reverse loopers little tombstones on all of my turnouts. So there's 42, 43, 42. You look down here, there's 24, there's 13. Here's 44 here. I'm pointing to. Those correspond to these numbers along here, which are the DCC addresses for each of these switches, turnouts. And then here you can see the fascia controller. If I hit a button on one, it will change the direction of the controller and it will change the lights. So these are, uh, these LEDs are, um, are two color LEDs. So right now it's red on the top and green on the bottom. If I press it again, it'll 
change it so it's green on the top and red on the bottom. If I issue a DCC command, it'll do the same thing there. And the way I've set this up is the green lights for all of these indicate that the turnout is in the through direction. So Now you may remember this section of track here where it goes from the corner comes in and goes all the way to the other corner and I've got my foam pylons in place but I couldn't fit foam in all the areas so for those I made my own pylons and you can see them there all these are are these are some uh, kitchen bamboo skewers in there and a little piece of uh, popsicle stick that I cut off there and another piece underneath there to hold it so that's quite sturdy uh, and uh, make sure I don't have any issues and I have more than enough clearance I checked all that so I put those in there the other ones that I did were on this side of the layout where you can see I have even less room as I come around from here where I've got a piece of foam I gotta come over all this track work here and so what I did is I built pylon there built another one there and built a couple of more back there and it's pretty sturdy and then in here I still needed something rather than build a pylon I just put a piece of foam board in there and then this is a narrower piece of foam in here and then my regular foam again so I had to build those little guys in as well so part of what you didn't see was the bus wiring that I did I'm gonna start with these guys right here and these connect into in this case it's a programming track in this case it's DCC and then this is if I want to run DC they all come through and they go underneath there <laughs> uh, actual bus wiring here's two separate buses here easiest way to show you here's some feeder wires coming out they've been soldered into the bus wire and then I tape over them with duct tape to hold them I use just a, a low temp glue gun here to help hold stuff you can see over here the same things going on and you can see the tape comes off after a while so I'm constantly battling with that this here is one of the switch right machines that is used for servo activation and it's the one same as here here's a servo switch right machine but you can see all the wiring going on down there now there's a lot there because these all connect into the fascia controllers that drive all of the servos so you can see there's a ton of wiring that goes on and this is a freestanding foam board that I have here I can lift up on it you can see all of the wiring then that goes on underneath there you can see in there I got two reversing units well three counting the Tam Valley one uh, and all the rest of the wiring that goes on there as I say I'll be making a separate video of this at some point in time because there's lots going on underneath here and then on the side here each of these as you can see are the fascia controllers I normally leave them with green all the way along the top because to, that means to me that if I put a train on it'll go all the way around and it won't have a problem hitting anything uh, any of the turnouts in the wrong direction the other thing I have is my control here which you can see I have four control units to go between DC and DCC all I really want is at any given time is to have them all in the same direction these four or these are the three reversing loops this is only required if I'm running DC and I may have to reverse the main as well when I'm on DC so that's what that's all about 
So I hope you've enjoyed this series about how I build track and install it and solder in feeders and everything else that's involved with it. Here's the pretty much finished test layout now in the format that I wanted. As you saw I can lift it up, um, lean it against the wall if I want to. Total dimension of this is three feet wide by seven feet long. Uh, so it's a bit it's a bit lengthy but works for me. So thanks for paying attention and we'll see you on the next set of videos.